Oh, this is a, <laughs> this is something you might have to write, try to write a book about. Um, I think that physicalism does not have a problem with free will insofar as free will is something that's possible at all. Um, that is, uh, I think that the only defensible conception of free will is the compatibilist conception. I'm not at all sure that that's what we want or that's enough for us, but I think that's all we can have. And so, as far as that's concerned, I think physicalism isn't going to have a problem. Uh, as for intentionality, um, since I've already got... Well, let me say something about qualia, because by qualia I don't just mean the usual examples, you know, the experience of red or the, the smell of garlic, that standard uh, class of cases, because I believe in something that's now called cognitive phenomenology. That is, I think, that there's such a thing as meaning experience or understanding experience. I think there's something it's like experientially to understand a proposition. So that, that enormously enlarges the domain of, of qualia compared to what some people think qualia are. They think it's just sensory, the, the great range of sensory experiences. But I think that all perception is infused with concepts and all, the, all this has a qualitative character. So, to, so even if it were true that physicalism only had a problem with qualia, that would be a much bigger problem than some people think because it includes really everything that matters about human life. And, you know, <laughs> love and war and friendship and... Um. As for intentionality, well, I, here, here it's connected with, with qualia because I, I don't know why I'm using the word qualia because I think I'm using it because it's easily understood but I really don't like to use the word. Um, <coughs> I do think that Nothing, intentionality is a matter of things being about or of other things, and I do think that there is no intentionality without consciousness or without experience. Nothing can really ever be about anything else unless it's some kind of conscious state. So that's very intimately connected with, with experience or what it likeness or qualia. But we've got those. I've already said I think we can be certain we have those. So that means we... I'm certain we can have intentionality. That means in turn that uh, the real physicalist like me can have it, but the people, most of the people who call themselves physicalists today, as I said before, are the ones who don't really believe in consciousness or qualia at all anyway. So they can't have intentionality either. So final answer to your question is they do have a problem with intentionality and it's closely connected to the problem they have with qualia. Uh, as for ethics, well, we've talked about, uh, should I say things like you've talked about? Um, we, well, I could say we've talked about, we've talked about physicalism, but <clears throat> I'm inclined to extend that to include naturalism. Most people who define themselves as naturalists define themselves as physicalists. And I am some sort of naive moral realist about certain ethical principles, I think they're just true. Uh, just as I, but I think they're no worse off than mathematical truths, and they're just true, and they're clearly not dependent on physical facts. So I, sp I suppose I might classify as anti-naturalist when it comes to certain very fundamental ethical truths. And really, they're pretty basic, the kinds of things I have, like, you know, knowingly and intentionally and with full understanding causing intense suffering is just not a, is <laughs> morally bad. I mean, let's take a really simple example. But I don't think that that, that certainly doesn't conflict with physicalism because it isn't, it isn't, as it were, a rival hypothesis about the nature of concrete reality. Um, it, to me, it's a truth that's like a mathematical truth. That's not to say that it isn't a, a real truth that really applies to the world, because after all, mathematical truth applies to the world. If I have seven oranges and five oranges, then I have 12 oranges. So too, um, I think it applies to the world that certain acts are, are morally good or morally bad. But it isn't, uh, it doesn't, it depends what kind of physicalist you are. If you're the kind who wants to say, all there is is physical reality and nothing else can be true, or that isn't, either about physical reality or justifiable in terms of it, 
then they will have a problem with ethics, but then they'll have a problem with mathematics. So I don't think they should go there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a different... So I think it can live perfectly comfortably. I think that a... a except, of course, that a, a, a physicalist in the bad sense, the one who denies the existence of consciousness, also can't really make sense of ethics or morality at all.